Here it is, Megatron for a new generation. Hello everybody. In the early 90s, the Transformers Generation 1 toy line was coming to an end. They tried to revive it in the Generation 2, but it wasn't a big success. And uh, what happened is that in 1996, Hasbro tried to relaunch the Transformers, introducing the Beast Wars. Beast Wars were basically uh, set in, in the same continuity as Generation 1, but uh, they were the descendant of the original Transformers. The figure you see, you see here is the Megatron for the first wave of Beast Wars. It was one of the larger Transformers in the line and uh, I apologize for any issue I will have by filming this toy here. It's very large and not so easy to handle. Now, the figure itself, as you can see, transforms into a Tyrannosaurus Rex, a dinosaur, all the Beast Wars turned into beasts, basically, and he is the leader of the Predacons, the bad guys in the Beast Wars line. The figure has a few points of articulation, you can move his front arms, like so, they just move up and down. You can also move somewhat the legs, Basically, you can bend the knees, which are really tight on mine, and you can open the mouth of the dinosaur. Now, if you open the mouth, the dinosaur will squirt water. And uh, here's the gimmick. There's a little portion of the dinosaur neck that you can remove. I'm trying to do so. Okay. Okay, which is basically a water gun. You can fill it with water, Focus, please. Okay, you can fill this with water and by pushing the tongue, this red thing is the tongue of the dinosaur, it will squirt. You can fill it with water, put it back into the dinosaur's mouth, if I can. It's not easy, I told you. Okay, snaps into place. And when you open the, the dinosaur's mouth, it will push the tongue backwards and uh, this way squirt water. It's a nice feature. There's something more you can do with this and uh, is deploying to Mison launchers which are hidden in the legs of the dinosaur. You basically pull them out. I'm trying to do so without knocking out the camera. Okay, one on each side. It's a little bit tricky, but it will come out. Position them, and they have those purple buttons that will fire two missiles, like so. Okay, now close the legs back again. They can be closed even without the missiles inside. And just have a quick comparison of Megatron with a couple other Transformers. A first comparison could be with his... Uh, oh, please stand. It's not easy to... Okay, have him standing because you can see it's just on two legs, but... You can see Megatron near to Optimus Primal, his main adversary in the show, which is also a pretty big figure. Or we can see Megatron close to the leader class Megatron of the Combiner Wars we have in stores right now. You can see it's really big, it's very, very big. Okay, it's nicely detailed, all the skin is textured all the way to the tip of his uh, tail. And uh, it's a nice looking piece and quite heavy I might say. Now, transforming Megatron is not an easy task, and that's not because of his design, which is basically pretty simple, but because of, few, of a few clearance issues along the figure. Now, 
The transforming will start on his back here when you should see those two tabs uh, hidden on his spine. Push on those tabs and split open the back of the figure. The sides should open like so. When you're there, you can also push down this little panel here and uh, move the arms so that they go along the sides of the dinosaur. We now extend this black portion up, okay, like so. I keep it this way. We now turn, on, if we can, you can extend the legs, it can be useful to have a little more clearance, but we should turn this portion of the robot. So push the sides further back, like so, and turn the side of the robot, like so, okay, 90 degrees. We can now move the sides of the, of the dinosaur further back, like so, extend the legs of the dinosaur and rotate the lower portion and also extend the heels from behind his feet so that we now have robot legs on both sides like so okay now on this black portion here pull out the robot's head and now bend the the portion 90 degrees and click it snap it to the back of the figure it should snap into position and this way hold also the head of, of the robot in position it's the other pass part of the transformation but okay seems to be done yes well we can now <laughs> move down the dinosaur head to form his right arm and split open those panels on the tail of the dinosaur which are really tight on my figure and extend the tail like so adjust it because this is the left arm of the robot and basically this is Megatron we can now adjust and rotate the missile launchers which still work even in robot mode and maybe rotate them so that they for fire forward, like so. And that's it, more or less, this is Megatron in robot mode. The figure is nice, stands really tall even in this configuration, and uh, it stands easier than it did in, the, in uh, dinosaur mode, that's because of the heels we've seen earlier. Now you can see there's a lot of black parts on the robot, mainly we cannot see the robot's face, it's just black. And that's because many figures in the first wave had this kind of mask that I don't think we ever seen in the show, but you can open the mask to the sides like so to reveal a more easily recognizable Megatron face. Maybe I can close up on his face. He's nicely painted, by the way. So it should be worth it. Okay, you can see. He's very angry and very evil. Now, the figure has a few gimmicks in this mode. Basically, it can still squirt water from the mouth of the dinosaur. Focus, please. Okay, it can still squirt water. It can still fire the missiles. And we have on his left arm this kind of claw weapon here, which is his tail in dinosaur mode, that has a black lever on the back, which is located where his elbow should be. You can move this lever forward and back. I have a few issues doing that because of the size of the robot and the room that I'm allowed to use to film it. Close this and let's see. Okay, if I move this lever forward and back, the claw weapon opens and closes. Okay, you can snap it forward a little bit to see a more effective action. 
It's a little bit clumsy, but it's nice to have one more weapon in robot mode. Now, aside from that, we can see the articulation of the robot, which is pretty good for a transformer of the time. We can move the head of the robot left and right, even though it's, it is limited by this kibble on the back of his head. Now, kibble is a little bit of an issue with the Beast Wars line. As you can see, most of the dinosaur is hanging on the back of the robot, and that is something to be expected in the Beast Wars line. Most of the robots were basically shell formers, which means that the shell of the old mode uh, rests on the back of the robot. Then we can move the shoulders forward and back, like so, which are on ratchets, so they won't get loose. The right arm can go up and down as well, and rotate if you want. While the left arm can rotate, can go up and down, and it also has an elbow joint. We have an elbow even though we don't have any ends on this robot. Then we have the legs that are on ratcheted joints that can move forward, backwards, in and out, the knees that can bend and that can also rotate. So you can get quite a few possibilities of at posing this figure. Even though if you consider it's pretty old, the generation one figures and generation two figures weren't really known for their articulation. So having Beast Wars with that level of possibility is really nice. Now, I think that's all. I wasn't really in love with the Beast Wars line when it came out. I started to love it when I started collecting Transformers and I found out that most of the figures had many mechanical gimmicks and I am a big fan of mechanical gimmicks. I know I am the only one, but I am. I like to see how they work and there are many different mechanical features all along the Beast Wars toy line, which I appreciate. Now, if you like this figure, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any comments or requests, leave them in the comment section. And if you want to see more of those reviews, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, good night.